It started as a chip for gamers. Now it powers ChatGPT, runs Tesla factories, commands Amazon's robot army, and turned NVIDIA into the most valuable company on Earth, bigger than Apple, more dominant than Google in AI. But this isn't just a tech success story. It's a power play that touches national security, global economics, and the future of artificial intelligence itself. Can it last? Or will China seize Taiwan? Google build a better chip? Or Washington shut the whole thing down? In June 2025, NVIDIA passed Apple to become the most valuable company on Earth, a $3.3 trillion titan. But here's the staggering reality. NVIDIA now controls 88% of the global AI chip market. That's more dominant than Google in search, more concentrated than Microsoft in operating systems. But this isn't just a story about money. It's about vision, survival, reinvention. It's the story of a company that started with video games and ended up controlling the future of artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, robotics, and even national security. The year is 1993. In a modest condo in Fremont, California, three engineers, Jensen Huang, Chris Malakowski, and Curtis Prem, met at a Denny's diner. Their idea? Build chips that could make 3D graphics come alive on home computers. At the time, PCs were slow. Gaming was basic. But movies like Jurassic Park had just shown the world the power of CGI. And these three engineers believed that interactivity, not just animation, was the next frontier. They weren't thinking about corporate domination. They were thinking about dinosaurs, pixels, and possibilities. We wanted to bring cinematic experiences to everyone's screen. They weren't the first to attempt 3D acceleration, but they were the first to bet everything on it. That's how NVIDIA was born, a name inspired by the Latin word NVIDIA, meaning envy. Their dream, make computers so fast, the world would be green with envy. But behind that branding was a radical shift one that challenged the idea that the CPU would always be king. At the time, most of the industry believed central processors would do it all. NVIDIA dared to ask, what if specialized graphics processors could outperform CPUs in visual computing? With no fabrication plants of their own, they made a strategic decision early on. Become a fabless semiconductor company. That meant outsourcing chip production and focusing entirely on design, innovation, and speed. They moved fast. By 1997, just four years in, NVIDIA released its first high-performance graphics chip. They were one of many GPU startups at the time. But by the early 2000s, only two would survive, NVIDIA and AMD. Why? Because NVIDIA knew this wasn't just about silicon, it was about ecosystems. From the beginning, they worked hand-in-hand -hand with software developers, building drivers, SDKs, and toolkits to make sure their chips weren't just powerful, but actually usable. That decision to embrace developers, not just hardware, would later become one of NVIDIA's greatest advantages. In 1999, NVIDIA launched the GeForce 256, the world's first GPU. It wasn't just a graphics card, it was programmable, fast, and a total game changer. For the first time, developers could manipulate lighting, textures, and shadows in real time. And gamers could feel the difference instantly. By 2001, NVIDIA became the official graphics provider for Microsoft's first Xbox, a major breakthrough that placed them inside living rooms worldwide. But this meteoric rise came at a cost. The company expanded fast, too fast. Production hiccups, manufacturing delays, and failed chip runs nearly crushed NVIDIA multiple times. There were layoffs, losses, and at one point, serious doubts that the company would survive. In 1999, they laid off over half the company just to stay afloat, 
long enough to release the G-Force 256. One wrong chip, one late shipment, one bug, and NVIDIA would have disappeared. In 2006, NVIDIA shocked the tech world by shifting focus away from gaming. It launched CUDA, a radical toolkit that allowed developers to use GPUs for general-purpose computing. CPU equals serial computing, arrow one soldier GPU equals parallel computing arrow 1000 soldiers. The idea? That GPUs weren't just graphics engines, they could simulate brains. CUDA turned NVIDIA's chips into engines for science, physics, and, eventually, intelligence. But for years, no one cared. CUDA was ahead of its time. Developers didn't know how to use it. Wall Street didn't know how to value it. Even internally, some questioned if it was a distraction from their core business. For 10 years, Wall Street valued CUDA at zero. NVIDIA had invested millions, with nothing to show. Here's what Jensen Huang later revealed. We spent $10 billion over 15 years building CUDA. Every quarter, investors asked us to stop. But we knew that if we were right about parallel computing, this would change everything. Until one research team in Toronto used CUDA-powered GPUs to train a neural network. The model? AlexNet. The result? It crushed every competitor in the 2012 ImageNet contest. And just like that, AI had its big bang. From that moment, everything changed. Researchers, startups, and cloud giants all realized the same thing. To build smart systems, you needed massive parallel compute. And that meant NVIDIA. OpenAI used 10,000 A100 GPUs to train GPT-4. Google, Meta, Amazon, all became customers. Microsoft built entire AI data centers, stocked top to bottom with NVIDIA DGX SuperPods. But here's the mind-blowing scale. Training GPT-4 cost over $100 million in compute alone. OpenAI's latest models? Some estimates put the training cost at over $500 million. And 90% of that money flows directly to NVIDIA. The new H100 chips? They cost $25,000 each. And companies are buying them by the thousands. Meta alone ordered $9 billion worth in 2024. By 2025, AI compute became the new oil. And NVIDIA owned the well. But even Titans have vulnerabilities. NVIDIA doesn't manufacture its own chips. It's fabulous. Almost all of its production depends on TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. And that means NVIDIA's trillion-dollar empire is built on an island at the heart of U.S.-China tension. If China invades Taiwan, or if U.S. export controls Titan, NVIDIA's supply chain collapses. In 2023, the U.S. banned export of A100 and H100 chips to China. NVIDIA scrambled to create downgraded versions just to keep serving the Chinese market. But here's what most people don't know. China was NVIDIA's second largest market, representing 23% of total revenue. That's over $15 billion annually. The export controls didn't just hurt China's AI ambitions, they cost NVIDIA billions in lost sales. Meanwhile, China has responded by pouring $150 billion into domestic chip development. Companies like Baidu, Alibaba, and Huawei are racing to build NVIDIA killers. And they're making progress. Now, TSMC is building a $40 billion fab in Arizona. But it won't be fully operational until 2026. If I'm an NVIDIA investor, the only thing keeping me up at night is Taiwan. But NVIDIA's biggest threat isn't geopolitical, it's domestic. The real threat, NVIDIA's own customers. Google builds its own TPS. Amazon has Inferentia. Meta is building custom AI chips. Tesla ditched NVIDIA for its own full self-driving silicon. And the newest threat, 
OpenAI is secretly developing its own AI chips. Sam Altman has reportedly raised billions for a chip venture that could directly compete with NVIDIA's H100s by 2027. Apple's M-series chips are already outperforming NVIDIA in certain AI tasks per watt. And with Apple's rumored entry into the data center market, they could become NVIDIA's most formidable competitor. Why? Because no one wants to be dependent on a single chip maker. Not when AI compute is this valuable. But here's the twist. While competitors race to replicate NVIDIA's hardware, they can't touch its software stack. CUDA, QDNN, Tensor RT, a full-stack ecosystem that's been built, refined, and protected for nearly two decades. Over four million developers now use CUDA. Switching to a competitor means rewriting millions of lines of code. That's NVIDIA's true moat. Not the chips, but the ecosystem. And replicating that could take another 10 years. NVIDIA is no longer just a chip company. It powers robotics at Amazon, real-time language models, AI art installations, genomic sequencing, climate forecasting, and self-driving cars. In 2023, NVIDIA GPUs helped diagnose a baby's seizures in record time, enabling life-saving treatment in hours, not weeks. But the applications are expanding beyond anything Jensen Huang imagined in 1993. NVIDIA chips now power. Drug discovery that's 10,000 times faster than traditional methods. Climate models predicting weather patterns five days ahead with 90% accuracy. Autonomous robots performing surgery with sub-millimeter precision. Real-time language translation breaking down barriers across 100 plus languages. It's building the NVIDIA Omniverse a massive simulation platform that lets companies model entire cities, factories, weather systems, and logistics chains. BMW uses Omniverse to simulate entire car factories before building them. The result? 30% faster production setup and $10 million in cost savings per facility. To Jensen, it's not just code. It's the dream of simulating the real world, pixel by pixel, so we can build better ones before breaking the real one. Its RTX graphics are pushing the boundaries of real-time ray tracing, and even using AI to generate pixels. One pixel rendered, seven imagined by AI. From Minecraft to medicine, from Fortnite to pharmaceuticals, NVIDIA now lives in the heart of nearly every industry touched by compute. But dominance doesn't last forever. The race is heating up. Intel is fighting to reclaim ground with new foundry investments and Gaudi chips. Apple, Amazon, Google, all designing in-house. The newest battleground? Quantum AI hybrid computing. IBM, Google, and even startups like IonQ are building quantum processors specifically designed for AI workloads. If they succeed, NVIDIA's parallel computing advantage could become obsolete overnight. And there's another wild card, neuromorphic chips. Intel's Loihi and IBM's True North mimic how human brains process information using 1,000 times less power than traditional GPUs. For edge AI applications, this could be a game changer. The stakes? Ai Nemchak Termek. It's becoming infrastructure like electricity, and the companies that control AI infrastructure will shape the 21st century. Will NVIDIA's new Grace Hopper superchip hold the throne, or will Blackwell chips dominate benchmarks and redefine performance? Here's what's coming in 2026. NVIDIA's next-generation Rubin architecture promises 10 times the performance of today's H100s. But competitors aren't standing still. AMD's MI400 series and Intel's Falcon Shores are targeting the same performance levels. And beyond speed, what about trust? 
With deep fakes, real-time voice clones, and synthetic media flooding our screens, NVIDIA now powers the same systems that may soon challenge our sense of reality. NVIDIA's newest challenge? Building AI that can detect AI-generated content. They're literally in an arms race with themselves, creating both the tools that generate fake content and the systems that detect it. As AI becomes the backbone of global productivity, NVIDIA finds itself not just making chips, but shaping how the world thinks, moves, and learns. The ultimate question, in a world where artificial intelligence becomes indistinguishable from human intelligence, who controls the companies that control AI? And what happens when those systems become too powerful for any single company to manage? From a Denny's diner, the dominating global AI infrastructure, from gaming cards to geopolitics. NVIDIA didn't just ride the AI wave, it helped build it. But in an industry where today's breakthrough becomes tomorrow's commodity, NVIDIA faces its greatest test. Can a company built on constant reinvention reinvent itself one more time? But in a world moving faster than ever, one question remains. Can the company that invented the modern GPU outlast Apple, outbuild Google, and outthink the very intelligence it helped unleash? The answer will determine not just NVIDIA's future, but the future of intelligence itself. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Capital Compass so you won't miss any future deep dives into the forces shaping our world. See you in the next video.